Okay, I think we have some new faces. Pong. Okay, can you can you introduce yourself? Ah, 제 목소리 들리시나요? Yes, please. Ah, 예, 저는 전기전자공학부 지금 협박통합과정으로 사학기체 재학 중이고요. 어 지금 여기 수업 같이 듣는 친구가 듣자고 해가지고 같이 듣게 됐습니다. 어, 뭐, 그 과제 하면서 FPJ 좀 다뤄봤었었는데 FPJ에 대해 좀더 다양하게 좀 배워보고 싶어서 수강하게 되었습니다. Okay, so who is your advisor? 아 저는 박종선 교수님께서 지도받고 있습니다. And your research interest? 어제주 연구 분야는 스파이킹 뉴럴 네트워크라고 어좀더 뉴럴 네트워크의 일종인데 좀더 뇌와 흡사한 종류의 그런 이제 동작을 하는 그런 뉴럴 네트워크를 연구하고 있습니다. 오케이 오케이 that is great thanks. 어 경철? 오케이 경철 열 대열 오케이 can you please? 네, 안녕하세요. 저 아, 들리시네. 아, 네. 저는 제, 제가 그 방금 유동우 친구를 같이 듣자고 했고요. 네, 네, 저도 같이 그 스파이킹 뉴럴 네트워크 연구 중인 대학원 석박통합 정치 이학기 차인 이경철이라고 합니다. 이학기? 네. And same advisor? 네, 같은 교수님. 그래서 okay, thanks. Uh, that's, that's it, I guess. I guess that's it, right? Okay. Don't want your microphone is not working, right? Ah, oh, working. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you please? Ah, 안녕하세요. 저는 어 김선욱 교수님 연구실에 있는 강동원이라고 합니다. 김선욱. 김선욱. Okay. Okay. 석사과정 2학기 때 하고 있고 저는 그, 어 저도 비바도 그 DSI IT라는 걸 설계할 때 비바도 사용해 봤었는데 그래서 이번 과정에 조금 관심이 많이 생겨서 어, 신청을 하게 됐습니다. 어, D what what did you say DSR? 어그 디스플레이 IP 중에 DSI IP. DSI? 네. So what is that? 디스플레이 인터페이스 IP. Okay, display interface IP. Okay. Okay, I see. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, let's get started. I press the button. Okay. Okay, to refresh your memory, uh, last time we, so we are actually talking about uh, embedded systems, right? We are trying to figure out what is the difference between embedded systems and general purpose computer systems, right? So last time we went through, we went through you know, some examples of embedded systems like smartphone, right? Some hardware component, okay? And also software component, right? So essentially, you know, uh, embedded system, from hardware perspective, embedded system, you have the same component, right? CPU, memory, IO devices. Same thing goes to software. You have, uh, you have firmware, right? So you have some firmware and operating system. On top of that, you are running many different application programs. And in some uh, in some embedded systems, some lightweight embedded systems, uh, people uh, tend to use a real time operating system, right? Real time operating, very light weighted uh, OS. Where one issue with real-time OS is this, this one, priority inversion problem, right? And the solution to the problem is priority inheritance, right? So we went through this simple example, right? That is the one. Then uh, what is the flow of developing embedded system? So look at this, actually essentially the same, right? Not only embedded system, but general purpose computer system uh, are going through the same process. Not only computer, right? Mechanical devices, other electronic devices are you know, going through the you know, similar you know, flow. The first step is obviously you know, planning and architecting, right? So think about the smartphone. Smartphone uh, 
uh, for next year, new smartphone. Then assume that you are working for Samsung, right? And you are designing new Galaxy you know, series for you know, next year. Then you have to think about, you know, think about what kind of new features, new functions you want to add to the smartphone, right? And how about the shape, right? Smartphone shape, appearance, and the weight. You have to think about that, right? So from the performance perspective, probably uh, uh, these days people are thinking about what? Thinking about neural network you know, processing, right? So assume the current uh, uh, Galaxy, uh, Galaxy, you know, application processor has NPU, right? And that NPU, that NPU is able to do, just able to do uh, object detection, uh, not object detection, image classification. Image classification. So like this, right? So image classification. Okay, so that is the one. Okay, so in this image, so in this image, there's a cat, right? In some image, you have a dog, right? In some image, you have, you know, person, horse, and so on. So current uh, galaxy, uh, application processor is providing just enough performance to figure out, you know, what kind of object are there in the image. Then next generation Galaxy S, you are thinking about, you know, this, this application, right? Image uh, detection, right? this bounding box. Also, sometimes this segmentation, okay? So you want to, you are thinking about, okay, I need to add, I want to do that kind of processing. Then current Galaxy application processor, the NPU, right? NPU in Galaxy is providing enough performance for uh, bounding box and those segmentation, probably not. So you want to, you want to add, you want to make it big. You want to make NPU, neural processing unit, right? NPU. You want to, you know, uh, so I told you, if you go, okay, first slide. First lecture. First class page. Is it? Oh, class page. Course intro. So if you look at the NP, uh, Galaxy, right? Galaxy, the application processor. So here you have neural processing unit. And this is neural processing unit is not enough. This unit is not enough for uh, object detection, this bounding box and segmentation. So you want to, you want to, uh, you decided to invest some hardware to make it big, okay, to add more multiplication unit main unit, multiplication accumulation unit, right? So then that is done in the planning phase. This planning phase, right? So after deciding the detailed specification of a new NPU, you start to design, you know, hardware, right? Using very low HDL, you, you know, add a bunch of multiplication unit, main unit, multiplication, and accumulation unit. Then uh, after doing place and route, right? place and route, then you are uh, sending your design to fabrication facility, like Samsung, Samsung Fab or you know, TSMC Fab. Then after three to six months, you are getting this chip, right? Then before that, you have to prepare this printed circuit board, PCB. So you are mounting, after you get this you know, chip, you have to mount that chip onto your PCB, a new PCB, then test it, right? By porting, by porting software, okay? And I'm pretty sure, you know, 100% of the time, the system is not working at the beginning, right? So you have to go through a lot of debugging, you know, process like this. Then what, what would be the problem? So problem could exist in, uh, hardware side or software side, right? 
So you have to go, in the worst case, you have to, if the problem is on hardware side, you have to redesign, right? Redesign hardware, design hardware, and send it to fabrication facility, wait another uh, three to six months to get the chip, new chip, right? That would be the disaster. Then you are missing the time to, uh, time to market requirement, time to market. You have to uh, introduce your product fast. Otherwise you are losing the competitiveness, right? Because many, many companies are producing similar, com uh, similar product, right? So you, you are better, um, you better uh, satisfy the time to market requirement, right? So during this you know, debugging process, uh, you know, how do your people, software people, they are blaming you know, each other, right? So how do your people say, says, oh, you idiot, right? You, you, your software is, you know, your software is the problem. And software people, I, you know, says, I followed your specification, you know, and write the code. The problem, is, problem is on your side, right? They are fighting each other, right? So after going through several rounds of this fight, and final, you know, product is coming out. So that is that is the flow of embedded system. Again, not only embedded system, but you know, GP, general purpose computer system, right? Planning, designing, then software porting, debugging, final product, right? Okay, that is about embedded system. Now switch it to let's switch it to general purpose computer system, right? That is a picture of a uh, main board, desktop computer main board pretty old, right? 2008, 13 years old, the computer system. So important components, important components are CPU processor and memory. And this green, green boxes are IO devices, right? CPU, memory, IO device, that is computer, right? CPU memory. And North, South Bridge, those are called chipset. And chipsets are also super complicated hardware component, really complicated, really very complicated. But its function, its function is very simple. Function is what? CPU wants to talk to graphics cards, right? CPU wants to access main memory, right? CPU wants to access hard disk, USB, PCI Express. Just communication medium. Communication medium, right? North bridge, south bridge. Okay. It is uh, based on this interconnect is based on uh, PCI Express, but its function, function is very simple, okay? You want to read and write, right? That is, that's it. You want to read from memory, write to memory. You want to read from graphics card, write to read and write, right? That, that is, that's it. So that is a uh, 13 years old computer system. And that landscape is changing very fast uh, thanks to semiconductor technology, right? So people are using very small, very small uh, transistor, right? Transistor size is getting smaller and smaller over time. That is semiconductor technology. So if you compare 13 years old Core to Duo with uh, Ivy Bridge, right? That's fifth generation, I think. Fifth generation Core i7, right? So if you compare these two, Big difference is uh, this one is called the three chip solution, CPU, North Bridge, South Bridge, big three chips, right? So three chip solution. Now two chip solution. You have CPU, processor and chipset, one chipset. So what happened is these two components, CPU and North Bridge, uh, these two are merged into a single chip because of the semi, thanks to the semiconductor technology. Transistor size, right? Switch size is getting smaller and smaller. So on same space, according to the Moore's law, right? On the same space, a number of transistors you can integrate got doubled every 18 months or two years, right? That is Moore's, Moore's law, right? So you, because of the semiconductor technology, you are able to integrate these two into a single chip. So inside here, essentially you have North Bridge. So look at this, right? Uh, main memory used to be connected to North Bridge side, but now right, DDR3. DDR3 is directly connected to uh, processor. 
because processor has memory controller inside. Right? And also graphics card. If you like gaming, you, you, you purchase NVIDIA graphics card and put that into this Pixel Express. Right? So CPU can talk directly to Pixel Express card through this connection. Right? And then all other things actually, so hanging on to uh, this chipset, right? one chipset. Okay. So okay, that is the picture I took before I left Intel back in 2008, before I joined uh, Korea University. So, you know, this ghost, right? This is me. Two people, right? One big guy. And there is a ghost, right? At uh, background, you know, someone is taking picture. That is me. Right? So 2008, 2008 was the 40, look at this, 40 years anniversary of Intel. So Intel was found at the time, 2008, 40 years back, right? That is 1968. So look at this, this one. So let me zoom in, zoom up, zoom in, zoom in this one. The reason why I took this picture is because I thought it, it, this, the, uh, this uh, poster is very useful. This poster uh, has very useful information because of this major product Intel introduced to the market from 1968 to 2008, right? Let me show you this one. Uh, 1968, Intel was founded uh, not as a CPU company, but a memory company. Intel was founded. The first product, look at this. First product actually was RAM, a memory, right? And from 1971, 4B CPU, AP CPU, 16B, 32, and so on. And that is an important point. Early 2000, okay, from, from uh, Pentium 4 model Prescott, model name Prescott, Intel, uh, Intel added 64B capability, 64B capability, early 2000, okay? So if you purchase computer today, then Intel processor is based on 64-bit. AMD, right? Same thing with AMD. Smartphone, all based on 64-bit architecture. Right? Uh, just in case, what is 64-bit architecture? That is a basic unit of data processing, right? Basic unit data processing in CPU. So one example is you have ALU inside the CPU, right? So 64-bit processor is taking 64-bit input, right? It generates 64-bit output, CPU, right? So that means, you know, register file also, right? All registers, right? Each register is 64-bit in width, right? In size, right? So we are reading 64-bit data, 64-bit output is stored back to register file. So data pass, in other words, data pass, right? Data pass, pass, data pass. Data is moving, you know, traveling through. Data pass is based on 64-bit, right? That is, that is the meaning of that architecture. Okay, uh, what is X86? Uh, this one, this one, Dongwu, can you please? Yeah. Yeah, read this for me. Uh, I don't want to lose my voice. So I'm asking uh, you guys to read. PowerPoint. Uh, what is x86? Generic, ter uh, generic term referring to processors from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. Derived from the model numbers of the first few generation of processors, 80, 86, 82, 86, 83, uh, uh, 803, 86, 804, 86, x86. Now it generally refers to processors from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. Uh, okay, skip, yeah, skip, skip. Okay. Intel takes about 80% of the PC market and AMD takes about 20%. Apple okay. also have been introducing Intel-based Mac from November 26. Mm. Thanks. Uh, the first one, why, why, why x86? Uh, that uh, name uh, is from uh, first few generations, first few products from Intel. Okay, if you go back, at this, uh, 286, right? 80286, 16-bit processor, 386, 
486. Pentium is 586, actually. So something 86, right? Uh, no, we no longer use that convention, right? The new you know, model marketing name, brand name is Core i7, Core i5, Core i3, Core i9, right? We no longer use that convention, but because of that historical reason, this historical reason, we still, uh, uh, we, we, we use that convention, something, something 86, to refer to processors from Intel, AMD, and via technology. And probably I have to I have to update this PowerPoint, this second bullet. Uh, this statistics uh, was true, I think two years ago, for you know, for 30, 30, past 30 years, that statistics was true. But nowadays AMD is doing very good, right? Uh, I haven't followed current market share, but I think 50-50. I don't know, 50, Intel 50, AMD 50. What do you think? Because AMD stock is skyrocketed, right? You know what? Before before I left Intel, AMD stock price was actually one dollar at the time, two thousand eight. I should have purchased, you know, AMD stock at the time. Nowadays, how 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 expensive? It is very expensive, I think, right? I haven't followed AMD stock. 106, oh shoot, 106 dollars, 100 times. Oh, I think better than Intel, right? Intel stocks. Wow, wow, 253. So 2008, I, I still remember 2008, Intel, Intel stock was like 28 dollars. AMD, one one dollars, one two one to two, one to two dollars. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Side <sorry>. story. <laughs> oh wow. Surprised. Okay. So probably more than uh, forty percent, probably sixty percent. Intel forty, AMD sixty. Probably I don't know. Uh, and uh, Apple, right? Apple. Uh, still use, I think, still use Intel based. Uh, but from, from last year, 2020, AMD, uh, sorry, so Apple, Apple is using its homegrown uh, processor, right? M1, M1 processor in their Mac, right? Inside M1, uh, there is, there are ARM, ARM, you know, CPUs. It is ARM based, uh, uh, homegrown. Uh, processor, okay. And before, before 2006, uh, Apple uh, used to integrate PowerPC, PowerPC. So before 2006, so Mac, right? Uh, 2006, 2020, until this point, Apple used PowerPC. PC and Intel. Okay, so from 2000, ARM um, actually, essentially ARM, um, because M1, M1 has uh, ARM CPUs, ARM CPUs. Okay. 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 Uh, that is about you know brief introduction about CPU in general purpose, the computer system, right? Processor. Too brief, but you know. That's enough, I think. Chipset, this one, Mingyu, can you please? Uh, we call North and South Bridges chipset. Chipset has many PCIe devices inside. North Bridge, memory controller, PCI Express port to connect graphics card. And South Bridge, HDD controller, USB controller, and various uh, peripherals connected, uh, keyboard, mouse, timer, etc., and PCI Express ports. Note that the landscape is being changed. For example, memory controller is integrated into CPU. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this is also a little bit old because you know it's, it's talking about Northbridge, 
this one, this orange uh, underneath, this orange heat sink underneath, right? And South Bridge underneath this uh, uh, rect, uh, you know, square, square orange uh, heat sink. You, you need the heat sink because it is dissipating a lot of power, right? You have to make it, you have to make sure uh, make, to make it cool, right? Uh, North Bridge, in, inside North Bridge, you, you have memory controller because that is connected, right? That is North Bridge is connected to actual memory, right? Uh, uh, in GP system, Okay, GP system today, we use a DDR4, right? DDR4. And DDR5, I was, uh, I saw article, DDR5 just came out, right? So from, from, you know, later this year or next year, I think new PC will have DDR5. But the problem is a processor vendor, Intel AMD uh, is not ready. Uh, that means, you know, the memory controller, you need memory controller, right? DDR5 memory controller to connect uh, memory, DDR5, okay, DDR5 to processor, okay? But memory controller is not ready, then how come? How, can, how come you connect, right? DDR5, right? Anyway, DDR4 uh, has been there for, I think, 10 years, right? More than 10 years, right? close to 10 years, I think. I'm not sure, but. And so DDR5 supposed to be uh, supposed to be come out uh, in 2018, 2019 around that time frame, but that 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 got delayed, right? So that that will be coming out. But again, the problem is okay. Memory is ready, but the processor is not ready because the memory controller, right? Anyway, memory controller is in North Bridge side. Then you can connect. A graphics card because that North Bridge has PCI Express, you know, the port. Also, that functions are integrated uh, into chip. And South Bridge, you can just read, you know, various, you know, IO devices, peripheral, peripheral devices are connected. Okay. okay. So, okay, so uh, not recent, but, you know, uh, you know, again, two chips, CPU, processor, North Bridge are integrated in a single chip. You can connect here DDR4, right? It is pretty old, but still DDR4. Right? We are using DDR4 now, now, nowadays, okay? Still use DDR4, okay? And PCI Express, the IO devices. Uh, PCI Express, from very old PCI Express slot to uh, more recent, right? Uh, by 16, right? You have PCI Express by one, do you have by two, I think by four, by eight, by 16, okay, by 16. By 16, that means what? That means data bus, data bus width, right? Data bus, you have a 16 bit, 16 bit data bus. So it is wider, right? So you have, you know, many, many, uh, you know, pins, many pin out here, right? By eight, you have eight bit data bus, right? So a little bit shorter, by four, by four, there's no by two, okay? Okay, by four, shorter and very, very short, okay? One bit, one bit data bus, okay? Very old computer system, probably you haven't seen, you haven't used this computer. We used to, uh, insert graphics card here, AGP, 20 years ago, I think, 20 years ago, okay? Processor, memory slot, chipset, okay? North Bridge, South Bridge, and some IO devices, you know, <laughs> what? Uh, sound card, right? Video card connected here and here, like that, okay? Very old, old computer. Probably by one, by one PC Express slot, by 16 slot. Okay, okay let's move on. Uh, logical representation. If you look at PCI Express data sheet or a book, then you can find out, you will, you will see, you know, this uh, 
block diagram from CPU to IO devices. How those IO devices uh, are connected from CPU? You know, PCI Express itself is very complicated, very complicated. It is, the data sheet is like, you know, few thousand pages, really, few thousand pages. Okay, uh, general purpose uh, software stack in general purpose computer system, right? Uh, from hardware to application software, right? Hardware, and on top of that, you know, BIOS is running. Basic input output system. Uh, two companies are providing uh, BIOS. And back in 2007, when I worked for Intel, I had a chance to look at uh, BIOS from Phoenix Technology. You know, you have to sign NDA, non-disclosure uh, agreement, to look at that BIOS code. Your manager should sign. Okay, and they, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk to anyone. But I'm talking. I'm talking to you. But I signed the NDA. I'm not going to talk to anyone about this BIOS code. Okay, and it, it is very expensive. Very expensive code and very complicated to write BIOS. You should understand you know, detailed hardware mechanism, right? Not only CPU, but you know I/O devices. What kind of registers uh, each I/O device? is providing, right? You should be very familiar with hardware detail. Otherwise you cannot write BIOS code, right? So I, I know no uh, link. So Phoenix technology, so what is the spelling? P-H-O-E-N-I-X technology, okay, technologies. Uh, if you put your computer, probably you have you have used you, you saw this logo very briefly for one second, then disappear, right? That is the uh, logo. Okay. And on top of that, so what BIOS is doing is BIOS. When you when you turn turn on your computer, BIOS is scanning your computer, scan your computer, figure out. What kind of hardware component you have? Okay, you have DDR4 memory and what kind of spec? Okay, the cost latency, okay, some, some latency and how big memory you have. And do you have a mouse and keyboard? BIOS code will figure it out, figure out, right? And how big SSD do you have? Those kind of things. Then BIOS is handing over to operating system, OS is managing all, you know. Low, uh, low level, you know, hardware system. Okay, it is managing, uh, you know, main memory, SSD, I/O devices, you know, things like that, right? And on top of that, you are running application. Okay. okay. Uh, this one, this one, Hunjong. x86 based system starts to execute from the reset address 0xffff ffff0. The first instruction is jmp xxx off from BIOS row. BIOS page input output system detect and initialize all devices, including PCI devices via PCI enumeration on the system. Provide common interfaces to OS hand over the control to OS. OS manage the system resources, including main memory control, the coordinate, the use of hardware among various application programs for the various users. Provide APIs for system and application program. Okay, so if you, uh, if you are logical and uh, in the past, okay, not, not, you know, not, uh, in when you when you when you are you know uh, when you are a college student not graduate student undergrad student probably uh, if you are logical you were thinking about this issue right this issue the first bullet right when you turn on computer where does it start from when you turn on your smartphone where does it start from who determines that uh, that location and what kind of instructions are there, right? Where does it start from, right? 
that is determined uh, from you know CPU vendor, right? X86 uh, instruction pointer is that number. That number, zero X. So inside the CPU, you have a CPU, right? In Intel X86, in X86 using this terminology, right? Instruction pointer. Instruction pointer. Uh, ARM and RISC V, MIPS. Uh, we use, you know, program counter, right? Same, same, right? Register. The function is the same, right? But Intel is using IP instruction pointer. So inside the CPU, you have a program counter. Let me, let's use that uh, name. And PC, PC contains the memory location where you read first instruction from, right? Memory. If that is initialized to zero, you are reading, reading what? The first instruction from that location, whatever it is, right? Uh, branch instruction. The reset yeah, label here. Reset. Okay, you jump. Okay, the first instruction. Okay, so the memory location where you read the first instruction is determined by program counter, and that value is determined by a processor vendor. Intel, right? Intel makes this decision. Okay, our CPU start from their location. Arm, arm. Um, okay, our CPU will start from location zero. Risk five, implementation defined. Okay, implementation defined. Risk five is open architecture. Instruction set, instruction set is free. Anyone can use this instruction and design your own, own CPU, right? When you design your own CPU, you can make that decision, that decision, right? Program counter, where it start from? Because you know that pro and counter can be designed with flip flop, right? Flip flop D and Q, right? This plain flip flop. But if you use a resettable flip flop or settable flip flop, you can initialize. You can initialize this output value, right? That is the reset value, the start point, right? Okay. Uh, so Intel X86 start from that memory location. So when you design computer system, your job is to place first instruction, place the first instruction at this memory location. And first instruction used to be jump instruction. That is in BIOS room, right? Intel, Intel machine. Okay, I uh, explained uh, already explained to you in the previous slide. So let's, let's move on. So important thing, this one. So again, uh, to refresh your memory, we are talking about, you know, what is the difference between in-base system and general purpose computer system? For that, uh, we went through, right? We, we went through in-base system examples and now today, general purpose computer system. And the point is, how, what is the difference between these two? Uh, How is it different from embedded systems? General purpose computer system provide from programmability to end users. You can do any kinds of programming on your PC, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, etc. General purpose system should provide network compatibility. A new system should be able to run legacy software, which could be in the form of binaries with no source codes written 30 years ago. So general purpose computer systems becomes messy and complicated, still containing all legacy hardware functionalities. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, you know, the difference, two, I would say two differences. The second, uh, second one is more, the much more important. But I think the first one is also differentiate embedded system from general purpose computer system. Right? First one is programmability. So embedded system, think about you know computer system inside a TV, computer inside microwave, your refrigerator, right? Computer inside you know projector, projector, right? And that computer is deeply, deeply embedded inside that you know, gadget, 
deeply embedded. It does not provide any, you know, IO useful IO devices to human. You don't have keyboard, you don't have mouse, you don't have, you know, uh, you know, monitor. Right? You cannot do anything actually, right? It is deeply embedded and it is only providing some special specific functions, right? So in that sense, uh, but you know, general purpose computer system, right? You have, a, you know, everything, right? You can do whatever you want to do, you know, programming, the, the surfing, documentation, cooking, uh, you know, you can watch movie, MP3, anything, right? You can do anything. But nowadays, if you want, right? Uh, we, 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 we talk about, you know, smartphone. Smartphone is in base system or general purpose computer system. Probably, you know, if you want, it is very inconvenient, but if you want, you can write program with your smartphone, right? You can download some compiler, right? GCC compiler, right? And, you know, write, you know, you know open up VI using small, you know, terminal on your smartphone then write code. But I don't want to do that, but if you want, you can probably can do that, right? Even though it is very inconvenient, right? And, TV, I, you know, uh, recently purchased a new TV in my office from, you know, LG TV. That TV, 65 inch TV. Uh, but I don't think that is TV. That is like tablet PC and smartphone. Very, you know, powerful smartphone. It has web OS installed, my TV. 65 inch uh, TV, LG TV. It has web OS installed. And you can you can you can surf the web, you can watch YouTube video. Uh, so I feel like it is the TV. TV is like smartphone, not classic, you know, antique, you know, TV. So I think technology is changing, you know, super fast. Right? So anyway, that is the one thing. And this is the most important, uh, you know, uh, characteristic important uh, thing uh, that is differentiating ES and GS. Backward compatibility. What do you mean by backward compatibility? Uh, let me give you one good example. Assume that when I was a, a college student like you, uh, 1990, that is 30 years ago, right? 30 years ago, 30 years ago, I used to, Okay, this one. Uh, my first computer, my first computer back in 1990 was based on this CPU, 286, 16 bit CPU, 30 years ago. Assume that at the time I, uh, I did homework, I wrote C program and I lost my source code. I have an executable. I compiled it, so I have an executable binary, but I lost my source code. I only, a USB, I have only the executable load. And I want to run that, uh, that code I designed, I developed 30 years ago. I want to run that on, on you know, brand new PC, the computer I purchased today. I went to you know, Yongsan, Zonja Sangha, and purchased latest brand new computer. And I want to run my 30 years old binary on new computer. Is it possible? Yes, because new computer is still providing, new computer is providing backward compatibility. This one, backward compatibility, okay? But uh, think about, your, you know, the embed system inside microwave, uh, TV, the refrigerator. You don't have to provide backward compatibility. If you want, you can design new, embedded system from scratch. No one is complaining about that. But in case of general purpose computer, right? Uh, assume that you have a five years old binary, then you purchase the latest computer today, brand new computer today. What if brand new computer uh, does not execute your five years old binary? You don't have source code, you compiled it already. 
Then you have a big, you run into a big problem. You are complaining to Intel AMD. Okay? So backward compatibility is super important component. So, you know, back in 2008, when I worked for Intel, right? Intel uh, was introducing new uh, processor every year. Right? So what they are doing is they are, they are adding some uh, new function, new function to, you know, to CPU then design it and manufacture it. And finally, you know, chip is coming out. And what they are doing, what they are doing uh, is they are running all legacy software, all legacy software, sorry, you know, bunch of software, okay? To make sure uh, nothing is broken, okay? If legacy, one legacy software is not running, then you run, you, 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 have, a, you have a big problem, right? That is what, uh, Intel is doing. So it is very tricky requirement, backward compat compatibility, okay? So uh, this is probably one good example, right? X86 operating mode, you know, 30 years ago, Intel processor was based on 16-bit, okay? Then later on, 32-bit. Nowadays, we are using 64-bit, but the brand new computer you purchase today should provide everything because of backward compatibility. You know, my 30 old binary still use this mode, you know, 16 bit mode, okay? Probably you are, uh, you know, 15, one five, 15 years old binary as are using 32 mode, right? And brand new computer should be able to execute that code, okay? That is the requirement, very tricky requirement. So this is one good example. Okay, let me give you some concrete example. Okay, this one. Kuyun, can you please? Kuyun, can you hear you? Okay, now it's okay. Registers inside the 8086, six bit segment registers. CS, DS, SS, ES, general purpose registers, all 16 bits, AX, BX, CX, DX, SP, BP, SI, DI. Okay. Uh, how many of you use Windows 7? How many of you Windows 7? You? Someone? Your PC, now Windows 7? Okay, can you do this for me? Now? No, not now? How, how many of you use? in the Windows 7 on uh, the machine you are using now. Because I want to show you this. Okay, I show, show you this, this screen, but Windows 7 no longer support that, uh, that uh, program debug. So what, what you are doing is, my machine is based on Windows 10. So command here. Then here you type debug. And can you can you do that if you have Windows 7? Can you do this? Debug, if you type debug, Windows 7 says, okay, debug is not recognized as a command. Anyone can do that? If you have Windows 7? Share screen if if you know uh, is it? Okay, I'm recording this lecture slide. Okay, you know, try that, try that. That probably you can see this. Uh, like GDB, right? GDB, debugger, right? Uh, GNU debugger, GDB. Okay, GNU debugger, right? So what it, uh, what it is showing is, uh, it is showing 16-bit register. 80, 86 uh, time register, okay? So code segment at the time, right? It's like uh, 40 years ago, right? 30 years to 40 years ago, right? The CPU from, from Intel, 8086. Code segment, data segment, stack segment, something like that. And AX, BX, those general purpose registers, right? Uh, so if you are familiar with, uh, I assume you are familiar with this 
familiar with the CPU architecture, CPU, some CPU internal, not detailed, but you know, some brief. CPU, you have registers, right? Temporary storage, right? Temporary storage inside the CPU. So in ARM case, let's take ARM as an example. ARM case, uh, 32 bit ARM, ARM version 7. Okay, you have R02, R15 register, right? Registers. Then you have ALU. That is a very simplified block diagram of CPU, right? So you are reading, you are reading from register, okay? Supply to ALU, ALU doing some addition, subtraction, depending on instructions, the instruction, then write result back to, um, uh, register file, okay? And you have memory somewhere, right? So uh, what happens is uh, AX, BX, CX, DX, right? So that, that is AX, right? AX, BX, CX, uh, those registers in Intel back in 2000, back in, uh, uh, back in you know, uh, this time, right? 80, 86 time, okay? So, 16 bit this it is 80 86 16 bit architecture okay that means those registers are 16 bit everything is 16 bit right that is a 16 bit everything is 16 bit right data pass right so as an example if you look at uh, this example ax Now look at this hexadecimal number AX. Look at this one. 192B, right? 16 bit, right? BX0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 16 bit, 16 bit, or all 16 bit, right? 16 bit registers. And, and 32 bit architecture, okay? 32 bit architecture, they are still providing 16 bit registers. And the way they provide the solid to be architecture is, uh, you know, expanding, expanding 16 bit registers to 32 bit. Okay, so the name is now that is EAX, and half of lower half, lower half of EAX is called AX. Okay, again, lower half. Okay, you have EAX, right? EAX register, 32 bit. And this lower half, right? Lower half register is called AX, 16 bit. Okay. So that is the that is a way to support 32 bit and 16 bit, uh, 16 bit, you know, uh, architecture. Okay. And. Let's go through one specific example. Okay, we have, I think we have enough time. Okay, let's read this and uh, explain to you in detail. Uh, Himin, can you please? In real mode, general purpose registers are all 16 bit wide. Real model segment registers specify the base address of each segment. Segment registers, code segment, used to store instructions. Data segment used to store data. Stack segment, stack, extra segment could be used to store more data. Addressing method segment, uh, purpose offset, left shift is called address. Example, data segment starts from two or zero. Okay, okay, that is enough. The next slide, let's, let's finish uh, the reading. Okay, uh, 820M, let's read this, okay. This one, Sungun, can you please? 8088, 8086 allows only one megabyte memory access since they have only 20 bit physical address lines. Uh, memories, memory is accessed with Segment offset in in 
mixing these two together to generate 20 bit address. Okay. And the mechanism they use is this mechanism is use this one segmentation register. The segmentation shipped by four bit. Okay, you shift, shift segment, the segment register by four bit. Then you get 20 bit, right? 20 bit. CS, CS register, 16 bit, and four bit shift, right? Then that means you are adding zero, 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 four bit, four bit. So 20 bit. Okay, then add the instruction pointer plus instruction pointer IP. Then you get some number which is 20 bit. So that is that is the memory location you are going to access. Okay. So that mechanism that Intel came up with that mechanism, right? Segmentation and offset, right? To patch again, to patch to read the instruction machine code, you are using CS and IP. CS is four bit shifted, and you are adding IP. So example is this. Uh, this one is uh, data read, so not instruction patch. Okay. In case of data, data access, data, data access, you use, you are using data segment, okay. data segment. So same same you know same mechanism. Data segment, for shifted plus offset. Okay, plus offset. So look at this. Here, uh, we haven't studied Intel instruction, but it is intuitive, right? You are initializing AX2, 2000. AX is 2000, right? like this. Okay, sorry, AX is 2000, and AX is copied to DS, data segment. So DS register is 2000, right? Then next instruction, you are, this one is offset, offset, right? So segment is the base. Base. From here, data you want to access is 100, 100OA, 100OA, offset, right? 100. 100, not byte, right? 100 hexadecimal, 100 away from this base. Okay, so like this, right? So 2000 two in hex. So you Four bit shift, right? Then twenty thousand, right? Twenty thousand plus is offset. So this is the memory location that you want to access. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. Any question? Is it clear? So basically, we use a segment and offset concept, right, to access data or to access instruction. Okay, when it comes to data, you are uh, shifting, you are for shifting segmentation, segment register, data segment register, and add offset, right? Uh, and, you know, instruction patch, you know, code segment register for be shifted and add, you know, instruction pointer, right? So in that case, in the case data segment, data segment is 2000, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, hex, right? Hex, 1000 and data segment register and four be shifted. So you are adding one more zero. Then offset is one zero zero, right? Offset is one zero zero. So add you know, one zero zero. So you get hex two zero one zero zero. So that is the memory location you want to access data from. Okay. So those some so we have some problem, right? Okay, so what is the problem? Uh, that is the one I uh, explained to you. We are 8086 is providing 20 bit address bus. Okay. So we have some corner case in this uh, case. What if, what if a segment register is 0xf and instruction pointer, right? This one. This one. Instruction pointer is, for example, 0x, what? Uh, a 0, 0, 0, 2, 0. Then you do the same, you go through the same formula, right? So CS register for be shifted. F, F, 
F, F, this one, and one is, uh, you know, appended. And then add 20. And what number you get? And simple math, right? Zero, F plus two, which is one. Then you have carry out. One plus F is zero. Okay, carry out. One plus F, zero. Okay. Carry out. One plus F is zero. Then you have carry out, right? One. Okay, so in hex, hexadecimal number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? The problem is you have only 20 bit, 20 bit address bus. So you are able to, you are able to deliver only that information. Okay, not, not, not this, not including this one, last one. Because you you physically you have only twenty bit, okay. So uh, what it, it means that you know, you have a memory, right? So you have memory from zero to location zero to location five Fs, right? F F F F F. But what this uh, this uh, code says? Okay, base base is close to very close, very close to the uh to the to the end of this main memory right so from here the target location is 20 20 byte away right 20 1 2 3 4 but there is nowhere to go because it is top then you have to wrap around so you you end up accessing accessing this data one zero location right so the problem is, okay, this CPU, some, you know, some very strange, very weird you know, programmer took advantage of this property. Okay, if I write this code, then CPU is patching instruction from this location, wrap around and patching the location. Some programmer took advantage of that mechanism. Okay, uh, so, you know, in this CPU, okay, no problem in this CPU, but next generation, next generation, 286 processor, 386 processor. The address, the width, address width is, you know, got you know, wider, right? Not 20 bit, it's 24 bit, let alone 32 bit, okay? Address bus width, you know, got wider and wider. So if you run this program, okay? If you run this program, uh, CPU is, is, is generating not this address, CPU is not generating this address, but everything, including, including the one you removed. So if you run the same program, CPU is not accessing this location, but some location here, this location. That is breaking the code, right? That is breaking the code because they got the compatibility. Right? They got the compatibility. So the solution, Okay, so that is the one. So called, okay, this one. Uh, uh, someone, can you please? Uh, how about, how about now? Your core to do has 48 bit physical address line. Yeah, this 48 bit, right? 48 bit physical address lines. What happens if there is no protection in the previous case? Processor rear says uh, 0x100010, zero 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 zero, breaking the legacy code. So x86 provides a mechanism called A20M, which is A20 mask, to make it compatible with the old generations. OK, thanks. That is the, this is the hardware block diagram to avoid that problem. So address, right? Address bus, starting from address zero to address 19, that is 20 bit, okay? Next one is A20, right? A20 is 21st, 21st, right? Address 20 is 21st address line, 21st address line. So when you run this kind of code, you have to make sure, you have to make sure that address line goes down. 
A20 should be zero. So that this one, A20, right? This is A address line 20, this part. Address line 20. So you have to make sure when you run this code, right? Address line is, you make this address line to zero so that you, you access this location, not this, you know, this location, but that location. So how, what is the solution? Very, very, you know, nasty solution. Look at this, your keyboard controller, right? Your keyboard, right? This keyboard, right? Keyboard. Inside the keyboard controller, there's a register. Okay, when you run code, CPU is writing some, you know, writing this register to make it zero. Okay? Writing register zero, so you access this memory location. So inside the CPU, there is a micro code, right? Intel is based on CISC architecture. CISC architecture, complex instruction set architecture, right? CISC, instruction is very complicated, right? Each instruction, very complicated instruction, right? Like a string copy, right? Okay, so I just wrote the book, okay? okay if you uh, don't have enough, you know, background, probably, you know, go, go to my webpage. I wrote this book, uh, Computer Architecture, based on Risk Five, right? And just published, okay? I, I, I wrote that book six months ago, then it took six months to refine the book, find the typo and do some cosmetic work, right? Click on this, just published. Uh, September, you know, six yesterday, right? Not yesterday, two, two days ago, right? So, uh, okay, so it is talking about and uh, CISC and RISC. If you are not, you know, if you don't have enough background information, probably I explained the difference between these two in very detail using examples, right? So there's the one. So CISC architecture, each instruction is doing very complex work. The one good example is a string copy, string copy. So you want to copy, for example, hello, this is string from this location to the destination. And one instruction in x86 case, one instruction is doing this whole copy operation, h2 here, e2 here, and check the exit condition. Okay, one, two, three, four, five characters copied, then you have to exit, right? So designing that hardware is very complicated. So Intel is using microcode, right? Microcode. Uh, Intel, Intel terminology, it is macro instruction. Macro instruction and there is a micro instruction, which is executed internally, okay? Micro instruction. I, I, anyway, okay, I'm trying to explain this mechanism, how? How to, how to program, how to program this register to zero while executing some instruction. Because the secret is microcode, microcode, right? By changing microcode, you can, you can program this register to zero, okay? So that is one example, okay? And another example is, uh, let's skip this part. Okay, this one is a little complicated. So one good example is interrupt controller. So prob I don't, I'm not sure if you have heard about 8259. It is, I think, 50, one, five zero. 50 years old interrupt controller in PC, in PC, okay? Uh, the thing is you still have, in South Bridge, you still have 8259 interrupt controller. This interrupt controller is able to take only eight inputs. Eight inputs means IO device, right? Every IO device has interrupt output, right? Keyboard interrupt output, mouse interrupt output, every you know, IO device has interrupt you know, output, right? So that means what? 8259, you have eight inputs, right? And that is cascaded, right? So eight IO devices, and seven IO devices. So you can connect only 15, one five uh, in, uh, IO devices to the system. But nowadays we have a lot of IO devices, more than 15, right? So the Intel, 
the the thing Intel uh, the approach Intel took is this block diagram. Okay, so you have two two legacy super old you know, interrupt controllers and new interrupt controllers IOA pick okay interrupt controller and inside the CPU you have one two three four five six seven eight each physical CPU has one interrupt uh, controller, internal interrupt controller, local AP. It is very complicated. You know, interrupt mechanism itself, very complicated. So how many interrupt controllers do you have? One, two? Because Intel is providing hyper-threading, one physical CPU, but two logical cores, right? One physical CPU, two logical cores, right? So each logical core ha is handling one, local AP, this one. One, two, three, four. In this case, two CPUs, right? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11. 11 interrupt controllers inside the processor. So if you go to, uh, let me quickly finish this one. If you go to this one, check out this uh, North Bridge, South Bridge, South Bridge specification. South Bridge, uh, sorry, where does it go? Uh, okay, South Bridge specification, uh, IO AP, right? I, uh, sorry, IO controller. Uh, then let me download it, open it, and search with 8259. Look at this, interrupt controller, right? 465. 465. Look at this. You still, you still have, okay. Inside your uh, chipset, you still have 8259. You cannot throw it out because of backward compatibility. Someone, someone is, someone may touch, someone may touch registers in 8259. So you better keep that hardware component. Otherwise, you are breaking legacy code. Right, backward compatibility. So you know, general purpose co computer system is really nasty. Okay, on top of you built, you are adding something, something, something. Keep something, adding something. Right, very nasty, you know, computer system. Okay, okay, that is it for today. Any question? Okay, that's it. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Okay, thanks.